A very good morning to all at Utsaf. Welcome you to this online service this morning. I believe that you're all well by the grace of God. In this current scenario, with all that is happening around us and its direct implications on our lives, it's very difficult to keep our minds and our thoughts rested. Our minds are continuously being invaded by many negative thoughts, the most common of them being, what does the future hold for me? But I believe God's word wants to encourage us in the midst of all that is happening around us to abide in him. The meaning of the word abide is to remain stable or fixed or to continue in a place, state or relation. John chapter 15 verse 4 and 5 says, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. This morning, there are four truths that I want to bring forth through this scripture. The first, abide in me. Jesus says, abide in him. Abiding in him means to continue in a daily personal relationship with Jesus. A relationship that is founded on trust, on prayer and obedience. Trust is built over a period of time. It's one thing to know about Jesus as mentioned in the Bible. But it's another thing knowing Jesus personally as the one who loves us, as the one who cares for us, as the one who watches over us. We can know Jesus in scripture, but yet not know him intimately as the one who can be trusted. Abiding in me also means remaining in fellowship with Jesus through prayer and not giving up when we are faced with challenging situations in our life. When we feel all hope is gone, we continue to remain in fellowship through prayer. Abide in me also means connecting to Jesus as a vine and a branch so that all that God has for us in him will flow like a life-giving sap into our lives. Abiding is believing, is trusting, is severing, is resting and receiving. John chapter 15 verse 10 says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. The way to abide in his love is to keep his commands. Abiding in Jesus means obeying his commands, which in turn keeps us secure in his love. Beloved, building relationship requires time and patience. The second is an I in you. This is about protecting our relationship with Jesus so that we continue to allow him to abide in every area of our life wherein we withhold nothing from him. Jesus wants to be the Lord of our lives where we do not allow distractions of any kind to affect our relationship with Jesus. Many of us probably who are hearing this morning's message may have been in the faith for a long time now. There have been moments and times where we heard the voice of the Lord, where we sensed the presence of the Lord in our lives, where we had encounters with him. However, in this journey with Jesus, we have allowed many distractions to enter our relationship. We have let our guards down. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of the eyes and the flesh, 
and the pride of life. These are distractions that have taken many of us away from our first love and not allowed God and his kingdom to rule and reign in our lives. John chapter 8 verse 31 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Beloved, God's word is our only strong foundation. And the mark of a true disciple is the one who remains in God's word, who continues to trust God's word, who continues to walk in obedience to it, no matter what the situation. The third truth that I want us to know this morning is that apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Jesus here is not talking about any earthly things, for example, wealth or money or riches, but he is talking about eternal or spiritual fruit, which can only be obtained from him. Nothing of any spiritual eternal significance is possible apart from this abiding in the wine that is Jesus. In John 15 verse 5, we are not dealing with anything marginal or optional. If we are not one with the wine so that Christ's life flows into us, then his words, his love and his joy will be completely barren in our lives. Nothing of any lasting value will come from us unless we depend upon him. The fourth truth is this, that God's primary purpose for creation is that we bear fruit. In John chapter 5, 15 verse 5 and 8, Jesus uses the word bear much fruit. It's twice mentioned in the span of three verses which actually gives us the emphasis what Jesus is trying to put on. And that is that God's primary purpose for creation is that we bear fruit. Fruit that Jesus is talking about in this scripture is not in context with us winning souls, which is absolutely an outward mark of a disciple. But here, bearing fruit is referring to us being fruitful in areas of our life. The first one being answered prayer. John 15 verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Beloved, when we abide in him, we become more like him. His character begins to mature in us. When we become more like him, he takes preeminence in our lives. And our prayers begin to change from being self-centered to God-centered. We now begin to pray prayers according to God's will. We surrender to his plans. We surrender to his purposes in our lives. And it says that when we do that in scripture, 1 John 5 verse 14 and 15, it says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have petitions that we have asked for. And so when we begin to pray prayers according to God's will, the Bible says God hears our prayers and he answers them. The second area that Jesus is talking about here is talking about joy, which is one of the fruit of the Spirit. John 15 verse 11 says, These things that I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Jesus obeyed his heavenly Father joyfully. In spite of all the opposition, in spite of all the accusations around him, he did not allow his emotions to get in the way of his mission. Likewise, we also have joy in obeying our Father's will. 
even in the midst of all these challenging times that we are faced with, we are able to still be a thankful people and we choose to continue to rejoice in Him. Beloved, in these difficult moments of our life, His joy becomes our strength. The third area that Jesus is talking about here is in the area of love. John 15 verse 12 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Love will lead us to obey his command. As mentioned in Matthew chapter 22 verse 34, the greatest commandment, which is also the vision of the Utsav churches, is loving God and loving people. And this is only possible if we abide in Him. John 15 verse 16 says, You didn't choose me. Jesus says, You didn't choose, you didn't choose me. But He chose us. And He appointed us that we should go and bear fruit. And that our fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give you. God didn't choose us to merely forgive us of our sins. He didn't choose us to merely give us the gift of eternal life. But He chose us that our lives may be fruitful and productive in fulfilling His purpose here on earth. Beloved, in conclusion, I just want to encourage you. Today, Wherever we are in our life, I want to encourage each one of us to draw back to our first love, to draw back into that intimacy with Jesus. A branch cannot exist apart from the vine. And likewise, we cannot be fruitful apart from Jesus. But as long as we abide in Jesus, his life will continue to flow in us. Let's pray. Father, this morning, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that in the midst of all the challenges that we are faced with, Lord, your word encourages us to continue to abide in you, to continue to remain in you and you in us. Yes, Lord, we acknowledge that without you, we can do nothing, Lord. And so, Father, we just pray, Lord, that even as, Lord, in the midst of all that is happening around us, Father, that you will give us grace, Lord, to still our lives, Lord. And Lord, to continue to draw to you and to continue to abide in you, to continue to seek your face, Lord, to continue to allow you, Lord, to speak to us, Lord. Lord, I pray that the foremost thing in our lives will be, Lord, our intimacy, Lord, with you and in you, Lord. And so, Lord, I just pray for everyone who's hearing, Lord, this morning, that you will encourage them, Lord, through your word, to not give up, but to, to continue to press on and persevere, Lord, Lord, in this relationship that you have called us to be in you, Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning. And Lord, we speak your blessing, Lord, upon your word. Lord, may your word bring forth fruit in every one of our lives. And Lord, we pray that may we be obedient, Lord, to all that your word says, Lord Jesus. We thank you once again. We love you, Father, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you richly.